How did you get started in, in this field? You came from law, right? How right. Did you, how did you get into uh, the brain? Uh, well, I'm, I am a lawyer still. My last bio class was in 10th grade. Mm. About 10 years ago, I was invited to a workshop to talk about where neuroscience was going in the next 25 years and what the ethical and legal issues were around neuroscience. And once I, once I learned a little bit about it, I got hooked. How, how will it change the law? Is it going to change the, the people's understanding of the brain first and then they'll change the law? Or are you going to get, do you think that lawmakers are going to get the idea first? So I don't think lawmakers are going to get the idea first. One big area for law and neuroscience will be predicting and predicting who's going to be misbehave. If you could say, with the help of a brain scan, this guy is likely to commit the crime again. This guy is not likely to commit the crime again. It changes our sentencing. Can you decide to go into somebody's head and derive what you say is real information about their, their, the condition they're in? Yeah. That's predictive. Is that, is that not some kind of uh, violation of privacy? Yeah. People talk a lot about the responsibility issues and in terms of how neuroscience will affect law. I actually think it'll probably have a bigger effect in terms of evidence of state of mind mm. for things like lie detection. I'm just going to ask you about lie detection. Uh, there are two companies that are selling the service. One is called CFOS and one has the wonderful name of No Lie MRI. <laughs> I mean, you can't make that sort of stuff up, right? Um, they'll take four or five thousand dollars, they'll put you in a scanner, mm -hmm. they'll ask you questions on a subject you said you wouldn't be questioned about, and they'll tell you whether they think you were telling the truth or not. But, but you know, it, this isn't voodoo. There really are 30 or 40 now peer-reviewed published articles showing that you can with 85, 80, 90 percent accuracy tell whether somebody's telling the truth or not. There are some problems though. Not every one of the papers finds the same brain areas involved, so that's a bit of a problem. But I think the deeper problems are, these are studies conducted as controlled experiments, usually with undergrads, and they know it's an experiment. Right, right. They've signed a consent form, they know they're not gonna get in trouble, and are they lying when the investigator says, when you see the eight of spades, say that you don't see it. Yeah. They're following orders. Yeah. Is that the same as when somebody on the stand says, no, I never tried to buy cocaine from that undercover officer. With any of this stuff, you really have to ask two questions. Does it work? How well does it work? How do we know that it works? How confident are we that it works? And then, if you decide it works, how do we want to use it? So one thing I like to say is, there are now something like 4,500 fMRI articles published every mm. year mm -hmm. in the peer-reviewed literature, and probably more than half of them are wrong. Mm. Not because it's fraud, not because they're bad scientists, but because you're at new frontier science, and lots of frontier science goes wrong. Mm. And we have to be aware of that. What's happening, if anything, to bring about some kind of review like that as a normal matter of course. Not enough. Um, you know, we've got an advantage in terms of courtrooms mm -hmm. because their judges have to reach a conclusion that scientific evidence is valid. And there are a variety of legal rules about that. And there is a judge as gatekeeper. But there's nothing like that for investigators. If a suspect wants to say, here, look at my fMRI brain scan, don't charge me. We got no regulation for that. I, I love my neuroscience friends. They're brilliant people. They're doing important stuff. They're doing moral stuff. They're doing it for good reasons. More of them need to remember that what they create might not always be used for good reasons and might not always be used the ways they want it to be used.